<laughs> All right, sweet. Here we go. Welcome to the MO Show at Beach Life with Jaybird. All right. Beach Life Ranch 2023. Cheers. Tarantula to that. Tarantula. Tarantula. That's funny. I just I just was looking over there and then I uh, I realized that this is the 2022 uh, banner. We got the 2022 <laughs> banner. Uh, can we get a Sharpie over here? <laughs> We get the, uh, Josh will do that in post. Every single little yeah, 2022, exactly. he'll, right. he'll change it to 2023. <laughs> Photoshop's a beautiful thing. All right, so welcome, Jaybird. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Hey, uh, so you're sort of like an unofficial ambassador to the beach life in general oh, gosh. in this community. Am so, I? yeah. So, uh, if you're not, you're now. <laughs> <laughs> you have been, uh, what is it, anointed? Is that a word? Yeah. You have been anointed. The uh, the official beach ambassador of this community. Jeez, um, so so give us a quick rundown on like what what is beach life and what is beach life ranch. Wow. And uh, what what does it mean to this this part of the hood? Well, I mean, the the team that put together this festival is really astounding, and they really work so hard to do everything all year around to make it all work. And beach life. The festival in the spring, I think. Uh, yeah, the May one. Yeah, the May yeah. one. Yeah. Um, it's a whole different thing. This yeah. is their sister festival that they have. It's just, I think it's focused more on like country and Americana. Yeah. A little bluegrass, something like a yeah, mix yeah. on that. Um, but wow, I mean, I'm actually curious if, on your opinion of the of that <laughs> yeah man i think so I, I know i agree with you they, this is um obviously i've played you know hundreds of festivals in my life i've i've as a fan gone to probably hundreds of festivals whatever this one is um it's really well done you know like it's like i was telling uh courtney she she's she runs the work so we're the tarantula hills a sp uh, craft beer sponsor here mm -hmm. um and they're uh they're really uh, fun and easy to work with um but yeah that's just like uh details you know like people often just don't pay attention to details like this festival the second you walk in and you just kind of look around you can tell that like they're paying attention to the details you know yeah the way that they do you know there's a vibe yeah there's a vibe like totally vibe. and like i was saying like with festivals like <clears throat> when you walk in whether it's conscious or subconscious if you feel like they care about you as a patron, like you paid a bunch of money to be here. Like sometimes you walk into a festival, and you're like you, you can just feel it. They don't, they don't care about you. You know, like it's the cheesecake factory. Yeah. They're just like, <laughs> roll them in, roll them and then out. it gets, Next it'll, table. it'll get like, you know, r instantly the people will just start being like rowdy and making a mess and not clean, you know, throwing trash on the ground. And just like, you can just feel it, you know, but when they, when you walk in, you tell like, Oh, they, they care. Like think one of the things like you're going to be all day, like, have some nice bathrooms for us. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to have to go in there 10 that times a day, depending on, yeah, like, so, like, they have, like, a nice bathroom set up. Those kind of little things that, like, just the details that just matter at something like this, like, to people, uh, they definitely, like, clued into it. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe silly, maybe, like, things that, like, younger person like yourself doesn't care as much about as someone <laughs> like me who's old and... Needs a chair. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, though? He's like 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big 10 years, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, is that, you know what I'm saying? No, I feel you. Absolutely. And then also, yeah, they also, they get, they, um, they do great job on, like, on the vendors, like, picking, um, Beers Tarantula like Tarantula Brewery. Hill. <laughs> 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 they nailed. They nice. nailed that. Yeah, they nice nailed that. <laughs> they no, nailed but uh, that. <laughs> but also they um, they do a, a fantastic job on picking uh, the bands that play. Oh, yeah, gotcha. the lineups are always killer. And the m music yesterday was just moving. Yeah, like th they're Dang moving. It. They're yeah. pushing it out. You know what I mean? So it's not. Yeah, yep. I mean they have what three stages, four yeah. stages. No, they do a great job Speak on that too. Speakeasy side, I mean, yep. you know, and then they got stuff going on backstage. Yep. Uh, yeah, like, yep, it's constant. And you can move, you you can move pretty seamlessly, you know, back and forth between the two main stages and get around to the small stages and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. and like in May they had bands like Tomorrow's Bad Seeds. Oh gosh, did they? Yeah. Oh yeah, they did that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. How was that? Sick. Was, was it? 
Yeah. Yeah. Super sick. We got here in the morning and watched Gwen Stefani sound checking. Yeah. She's in her like pajamas. It was so tight. Yeah. I'm <laughs> like, wow. That day was epic, man. Sublime with Rome. They did the entire 40 ounce to freedom r- yeah. record, which was yeah. like no way, really? a dream yeah. come true. Rome's here with someone else now. Rome and Duddy. Rome and Duddy. Dirty Heads. Today, yeah. right? Uh, that was yesterday. yesterday. Oh, it was yesterday? Yeah, I caught a little bit of it. Oh, I missed You it. were on your lunch break. Oh, damn. I was definitely buying beers from Did they play on the, the on the on the beach stage? They did. Oh god, I don't know how I missed that. That was today. That's why I missed I was it. asking where you were and you were on your oh, lunch shit. break. When people gotta eat, you know. Was I? And it was it was earlier. <laughs> John doesn't get breaks. Yeah, I don't get breaks. This, this sounds like a lie. Lunch this is a lunch Musk? break. There's <laughs> there's eating while I work. <laughs> <laughs> no breaks for Elon. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So Tell me, uh, how did you guys connect? Like, what's the backstory of when you guys first met? Mm. Um, I think Moy, the singer of Tomorrow's Bad Seeds, um, introduced Rico to you, and you guys had taken him to Europe on a tour with OPM. I had produced Ease Up before that. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I couldn't realize. I did that Ease Up. It's all blurred, the, yeah. the whole. So, uh, Not, <laughs> yeah, it must go. It probably was Moy who initially connected with Rico. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think I'm pretty sure. Maybe it might be the other way. I think it might be the other I way around. I have connected Moy with Rico. Ooh. Mm. Sick burn. Wait, how, how do I know Rico? I mean. Geez, Sounds I like a conspiracy. Yeah. yeah something something went down that you didn't realize, John. It's getting, uh, it's it, getting it creepy. Probably, I probably know Rico from Moy, but... Um, I think... Bec- I'm pretty sure that Moy introduced you and Rico. I've known Rico yeah. since I was 14. Yeah. No Rico way. Back. Yeah. I fucking love Rico. Oh my dog. He's, Rico is just an amazing person. Ricardo Javier yeah. Estrada. And he has one of the sweetest voices. Yeah, Ever. he's got a he's got some pipes. His voice is Smoke. like butter. <laughs> yeah. He's a piper for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love watching him and Moy sing together. That's a good. That's a good combo. You guys have something coming up, right? <laughs> Reggae at sea. Oh yeah, uh, we do. Um, I think I have a flyer somewhere around here. Um, we are doing an event in Marina del Rey, September thirtieth, with uh, Long Beach Dub All Stars, Lake Dub. And Show it to that Bad camera seats. right there. Uh, yeah, Reggae at Sea, and uh, it's going to be a sweet uh, event in Marina. Nice. Uh, like a four-hour cruise, 100-foot yacht. Um, it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited about it. Thanks for reminding me. That's a great idea. Yeah, Reggae at Sea. Yeah. The yacht is sick. It's huge, and it's super cozy. Um, you know, Multiple bars, bathrooms, the whole spiel. It's gonna be it's gonna be a cool little event for sure. Not as cool as the one we threw for Johnny's birthday though. That was pretty epic. How sick was that? Yeah. Dude, you that know how to throw a fucking birthday party. Yeah, that was a good time. <laughs> that was a good time. I was stoked on that. Yeah. Yeah, so no, go back to uh, what we were talking about before when we met with us. So we uh we did the uh the Ease Up E P Yeah at the studio, M and O Studio South. The M&O studio in uh, Westchester. That was a good time. You sold the house? I did. Fucker. I sold the house and it came with the studio. And, like, the guy that, you know, the people that bought it, the guy has, like, the ultimate man cave in the back. Cause he, oh, gosh. He wasn't right. trying that to, was the cave. Yeah, he wasn't trying to turn it into a studio. That pool, though. I tried to sell the whole thing. Okay. I tried to sell the studio with the house. Right. Um, so that was on the table. But the people that bought it, they didn't. They you mean like the equipment? And everything? Yeah, everything. Like just it was like, all right, here you go. Somebody come <laughs> make a record. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I make the records. So can you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I would have, if if they would have paid that or whatever, then I would have had, you know, banked that and rebought my studio or whatever. But what year was it that you guys did that album? That record? Do you uh, remember? Shucks. Do I remember? No. It was a minute ago. It was like a minute ago. <laughs> uh, well, when did you do your last did, European uh, tour? Uh, we can s- kind of gauge. Yeah, maybe some. I don't know. I can't even. I couldn't tell. It was you probably. Right. It was like five years ago. Yeah, at some least some shit like that. Yeah, you know, not that long ago, but yeah, we basically did. Uh, it was cool. We did a. Song ticking, ticking. It was uh, a a four song EP, and there was t- <laughs> there was a a punk rock and a reggae version. Yeah. Of Return to Sender. That's correct, and yeah. that's the name of the EP. Return, Return to Sender, Sender was the EP. Yep. Um, that was a lot of fun. 
It was a lot of fun. We should let's record some more music. Let's do it. We're working on MO Studios North mm. at the moment up in Thousand Oaks. Whew. So once I lock that down, then w- let's do this. That's like a thousand MO away or something. MO further <laughs> than further than the valley. Yeah, it's further than the valley. <laughs> yes. Maybe that's what you should call it. <laughs> yeah. That's the name of the studio. Yeah. That's deep. <laughs> Yeah, that's deep. It is deep. <laughs> it's deeper than Atlantis. Jeez, that's, <laughs> that's deep. That's real deep. That's um, deep. okay, cool. cool. Um, anything else you want? Anything else you want to talk about real quick, and then we'll wrap this <coughs> biatch up. Um, I mean, sh- shout out to Tarantula Hill for sponsoring me all day for my uh, alcoholic needs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got the drink responsibility though. That's oh, good. Yeah. I'm gonna that's a bunch of horseshit. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> define drink responsibility, right? Define. Maybe have a water every now and then. Right. Stay you hydrated. Know. Stay hydrated. Take an Uber. Take an Uber. That's it. That's all Don't you drink and know. drive. It's, it's yeah. not worth it. It's not. Um, what do I want to talk about? I Uber's probably saved event. millions of li- thousands of lives. Oh, you know, I was just thinking how we could rewind back to that time. Was right. Because your, your daughter's 12. That's correct. And... My daughter's nine. My daughter would have been four, probably. Yeah, that seems yeah. about right. Yeah. So oh, you, yeah, you nailed it on the five years. years. It was five yeah. years for sure. How did you do yeah. the math? Come on, tell us. Tell you us know, the truth. How did you do the math? I just go by my gut yeah. instinct. Yeah, and I, I could kind of. Yes. Just, just so Marley would have been like, uh, what? Five. Eight. Uh, Are eight, you doing so math? Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, seven. Oh, Please, seven. Simple math. Yeah, oh she would have been like seven. I haven't met Marley yet, but I'm guessing on seven. Yeah, she would have been seven. She was here yesterday. Where were you, sir? Uh, <laughs> further than the valley. Yeah, uh, he was out there. How's it going? Yes. <laughs> uh, When's the next event that uh, Tarantula Hill is putting on? And can I be a part of it in any way possible? Whether yeah, let's do a out flyers or anything. Yeah, let's do another. Let's do another show up there. That was sick. Yeah, you're birthday party was tight it was pretty fire it, it was, was a good time it was a good show ease up an opm yeah it was fun doing it yeah it was tight yeah we're gonna yeah. do my birthday party just like that not just like that but right around the same time next year so yeah. you guys yeah. you guys come yeah he's up that'd be rad we're gonna have, we gotta have uh tomorrow's bad seeds back as well that'd be cool i'd love that yeah. we would love that we, we love you so much i mean you're our boy my boy blue Anytime we can get up there, it's always a pleasure. I mean, the beer, the food, the vibe. It's tits. Tits out. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks for having me, Jess. Yeah. Thanks for joining Love us. Love you, Let's have a great day and have a great podcast. And uh, maybe we'll run into a couple more friends. Yeah, for sure. You know, around the uh, throughout the day. I'll send them over here for some coldies. Perfect. Cheers, Jets. Cheers. 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 show at Beach Life with Brett Landon. Thank y'all for having me. I'm excited to be Thank here. Thank you for being here. Cheers. 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 What cheers in? Three blondes. We are non-blondes. all three blondes. <laughs> We're three non-blondes. <laughs> all right. What brought you to Beach Life? A phone call, really. <laughs> um, earlier this year, I played a like really small, cool venue down in Venice Beach, and the guy who works there and booked me at that small show um, gave me a call a few months ago and was like, hey, I'd really love for you to come down to Redondo Beach. Are you available? I was like, yeah, I can be available, <laughs> absolutely. And it, it's sort of a pinch me moment. I don't think it really sunk in until 
we like pulled up and I walked on to site yesterday. I was like, holy cow, yeah. like this is a festival and I'm playing on it and that's people amazing. are walking around with t-shirts. I'm like, that's my name like on your, <laughs> on your shirt. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's super crazy. Cool. Yeah. This is an amazing festival. We've been this, this whole, uh, this episode we're doing is basically featured on this, obviously this festival and it's like such an amazing festival yeah it's just like nice like we're you know my team and I were talking about it earlier this week of just like being excited to be at a festival where people are here just to listen to music yeah you know there aren't especially I think out in California right there's so many festivals that go on but it's like a fashion statement you know you go and it's like high pressure and everyone's like taking pictures and it's like a whole moment that you have to make it that's more than just the music and people are just there like yeah. Beach towels and babies and yeah, beach balls and listening yeah. to music, beers. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like all the best things, be, yeah. be the beach, babies, and beers. So. Yeah. <laughs> the three Bs. Three yeah, Bs. exactly. <laughs> Where are you from originally? So I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Okay. Yeah. And you went to school at USC. I did. I did. Wow. So I've been out in L.A. like four and a half years. Um, and so it's really super cool to be playing this festival festival for my first especially because i've spent so much time out here um yeah were you doing music like early on as when you're younger if you count like banging pots and pans and Mm -hmm. driving my mom up a wall (laughs) um yeah like my daughter yeah always singing yeah it was it was constant performance all the time um and was you know in choir as a little kid was constantly wearing a billion different costumes and leotards and my poor mom had to do so much laundry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then I got older and I, I did acting for a little bit and I sort of tickled my fancy in that. And really during the pandemic, when everything really shut down and live performance really came to us halt, I really started leaning into my music that had just been an outlet for me. Mm. But then the pandemic, happened and I was like okay I really Mm. need to continue creating art for me it's like a lifeline and then we you know put down an EP that just came out and you know now it's just like having songs and getting them ready to release so it's been a crazy journey over the past three years for sure that's awesome you have plans to go back to Dallas and play that's the plan right now I have a few shows lined up actually in New York City I'm splitting time between New York and Nashville right now uh, recording doing things down there and then also playing up in New York, which has been a really cool opportunity because there's just music everywhere. Yeah. Um, whether that's like a, just a random person on the corner playing the saxophone <laughs> <laughs> right. um, or, you know, going to like iconic yeah. venues like you know, the bitter end. I went to like an open mic night the other day and, you know, people are just like from every, every band, just yeah. like people coming to play. So it's been it's been a journey for sure, and I'm excited because every city has a cool music scene. It's just about figuring out where yeah. it is and how that you know informs how I create. Yeah. Did you I ever uh, spend time in Deep Ellum? I did. I did. Yeah. I went to Booker T, which is the performing arts high school in Dallas, and that was like nested, like kissing Deep Ellum, right. um, which you know I think got a lot of us into trouble in high school <laughs> because it was a, a super cool artsy yeah. fartsy area yeah um but we also were in high school and like grinding in our art so it was it was like the perfect storm <laughs> do you remember a venue called trees I don't know uh, it's not it's not anymore you're probably it probably is, was gone a long time ago there was there was a couple trees that were growing through the middle of the inside the in the venue oh cool and it was called trees like there was like one like basically (coughs) right next to the on the stage like through the stage sounds awesome yeah it was really it was an amazing venue probably like uh maybe just under a thousand people in deep elm it was kind of the the spot what you know way back in the day back in my day did you guys play there we did yeah a bunch of times um a friend of mine i grew up with this guy named charles um he lived out there. He was in kind of like the the um, Pantera camp. Okay. And they're 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 in Dallas. They Super cool. they own a bunch of venues out there and stuff. So, um, yeah, those were crazy days. Deep Ellum was nuts yeah. back in the day. Yeah. I'm sure it still is probably a little nutty. It's but nutty, but I don't yeah. know if it's like nuts. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, was, it was intense. I've yeah. heard stories. My parents have been like, "Oh no!" Yeah. Like Deep Ellum was like. Yeah. Oakland was. 
yeah. crazy, crazy. It was crazy. Was like, oh. It was fun. Mm. Well, I was yeah. born in the wrong era. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's your responsibility to bring it back. I know, okay. <laughs> I will bring start back planting trees <laughs> <laughs> in Deep Elm. If you see anybody with a shovel and seeds, don't <laughs> okay. don't say anything. Right. It, but it's me. And what about Nashville? What what uh, you have plans to play some shows out there? So we're working on it. I think right now in Nashville, really just like getting in the room and having conversations. I am so blessed to have such an incredible production team and engineers and just like community that I've yeah. started to build build there. Um, but I'm still like so new to yeah. exploring and figuring out like where I'm gonna be and where the best place to like make music is yeah. because now it's like you can make music in like garage band in your yeah. bathroom. I yeah. mean like I'm not I'm not talented like that. That's like crazy people who can do that. But you know, figuring out like, where where my sound sits um, mm. has been a really cool journey. But yeah, I'm, I hope to play in Nashville. But it's also yeah. hard in Nashville because everybody yeah everybody goes to Nashville to play country music, yeah. right? And it's like you're a dime a dozen there. Yeah. So it really is like being there and networking and having conversations yeah. and going to see other people play and be like, oh hi, like how are you? Yeah. I'm Brett. I also play music and yeah. then. You know, if you're lucky, they're like, oh, yeah, I own this venue. Do yeah. you want to play next week? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm manifesting those yeah. those types of vibes. Sounds like you're recording right now. I am. So I am. you're recording a full length album? I am. Okay. Which is super exciting um, because it's I'm in such a different stage of my life than I was when I recorded my EP. Um, I like recorded my EP, I guess, between the ages of like 19 wrote songs and that are on the EP like from age 19 to 21 so I'm like in such a different stage of my life um, the EP is very like heartbreaky first love that didn't work out mm -hmm. so when I put it out people are like how are you feeling and I was like I'm feeling really relieved actually that that's just like out and like I can make space to create new art from like where I am now and where my feet are now versus like for so long, I was like, oh my god, I'm dwelling in like my f my first breakup from when <laughs> I was like, you know, 18 years old that I had like written and you yeah. know as the title track on the record. I was like, okay, like mm -hmm. I need to I need that to just like be out and be done and <laughs> create funny. space in the garden to like plant new trees. <laughs> yeah. I saw you played at the Troubadour. I did. How was that? It was unreal, yeah. an unreal experience. And the yeah. Troubadour is a magical venue it for really so many is. different reasons, but even still the energy and the magic yeah. is still there and there. everybody yep. who works at the troubadour now whether that's a crew or staff or security or whatever like really keeps the spirit yeah. of that place alive which is it's just you can't yeah. you can't really it's like palpable it is for sure i when I, I my my entry into the music world was i started as a scout at island records okay and this would have been like 90 what year was that probably 96 or something like that dang you're old i'm old huh that's you you were <laughs> not born yet I <laughs> i'm not gonna comment okay. on that. <laughs> um, yes so um i was we a maybe scout take another sip of beer <laughs> and at that time at that time you had to not only did you have to send in a demo but then you would have to perform in front of the a and r people to okay. get a record deal and so the places that you would showcase you know, would be, you know, the Roxy. Um, at the time, there was, like, the Opium Den. There was the Dragon f Dragonfly. Um, but the Troubadour was, like, because they had the best sound mm -hmm. and, the, and the way the room was set, I was, like, the premier spot. Yeah. So I, I was, I spent, I was there, you know, five nights a week, wow. you know, hanging out. Became friends with Christine. She's the owner. Yeah. Um, and like yeah, no, like you said, it's it's the history is so deep in there. The people who played and um, it is palpable. That's a great way to explain it. Yeah. I remember telling you, there's, there's this vibe you get right when you walk in there. And I remember yeah. one of the most memorable experiences that I remember from that time was there's I don't know if you've been there's a there's like a loft upstairs which mm -hmm. is they would use as like VIP sometimes. And I was walking up the stairs, and as I was walking up the stairs, I was like, I felt something off. I could feel something it was like different than normal and like I said I was there all the time mm -hmm. and then I walked in the room like everybody was like quiet and it was just this weird vibe and I was like what the fuck's going on yeah, here like, like, hey I'm, like, cruising, I'm like looking at my friend my friends over the bartender over there and then I'm like kind of just kind of like just you know 
bowling way through not paying attention whatever and as i like i walk i look down and i see s- somebody sitting on the couch with their hands like this and i see ozzy tattooed on the knuckles and i was like oh shit like <laughs> and he was just sitting right there and like everyone in the room was just like tripping out like it was like every every like yeah, you're like, you've been you around bugging? so many stars but then you see like ozzy osborne you're like okay th- this is what starstruck feels like, like yeah right his his energy in the room is like it's like it's just it, that's like a le- like everyone's like I, 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 I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fucking Ozzy Osbourne right there, like it was crazy. Even the stars are stars, right? Yeah, exactly, and they, exactly. And he just was sitting like this, just totally scared, like <laughs> not talking to anybody, <laughs> just freaking out. He was like, mm, Yeah. Was did crazy. I go into like a horror movie? Like, <laughs> what's going on? But anyways, yes, I love the Troubadour. I love that place. It's amazing. Yeah, it's special. I got to play there a couple of times as well. How many songs are you playing? Tomorrow. Yeah. Playing twelve, oh, twelve nice. songs. Nice, that's a good set. Um, ten originals, which is exciting. Um, what stage are you playing on? Playing on the Tito's Barn stage. Nice. Super fun. Super I was like, okay, fun. Texas Association. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I've been like hanging out over there. I just you know saw Abby Anderson like tearing it up over there, and I love yeah. her. Um, yeah, it's, it's a it's like a good fun space and people are dancing and drinking. Saw lots of lion dancing you know. going yeah, on exactly. there yesterday. Some mixed drinks and yeah. So I'm just so excited and honored to like be on the docket. Like yeah. the people on this are absolutely unreal and like yeah. span so many different eras of like country Americana music. Yeah. Um, so many of which like I grew up on. Yeah. You know, listening to. Jack Johnson, the Doobie Brothers, the Avid Brothers. I was like in tears. There was like a puddle. It's <laughs> 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 like, you know, sand blowing everywhere last night. And like tears streaming down my face. Yeah. And like the sand sticking to my face. And did you see when they came out and sang with Jack last night? I did. Yeah. It's like magic. It's pretty it intense. It's like imagine having that group of people as your backup vocals. Yeah. No way. Like they just went like. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was pretty magical yeah. for sure. It's like people who sound better. Like I feel like this entire festival is like people who are known to sound better live than they do on the record. Yeah, exactly. And that's like yeah. hard to do. Yeah. Much less create an entire yeah. music festival of just like iconic yeah. vocalists and yeah. performers. Yeah, so you know those people. They're, they're just spending their lives on the road. Yeah. That's just what they do. Yeah. And when they get back in the studio, they're coming. Yeah. This is boring. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I, I feel that. I yeah. feel like after I like have started doing live shows and I feel like really truly am, am fundamentally like a performer and a storyteller. And, and I think throughout my life that has come out in different ways and still does. And I love tapping into different, you know, mediums of art. But yeah. And then you do go back to the studio and you're like, yeah singing in like your little insulated vocal <laughs> booth yeah. and you're like i'm really sad and hungry <laughs> yeah. and exactly. i can't talk to anybody i can't see anyone you sing for five minutes then you spend the next eight hours waiting around for something yeah. else to happen exactly and yeah. they're like can you do that like one word again yeah. <laughs> and then you're just like do yeah. do <laughs> do banging your head against yeah. the wall but yeah no it's 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 empowering for sure yeah. and the energy here is palpable too yeah. Um, so it's really a special. Anything else you you want to plug or let Anything let the people plug, of the world know? know. Um, I'm not a boy. I feel like a <laughs> lot of people have been like, "Oh yeah, I, I've like heard he's good." I'm like, <laughs> "It is I. I am he." But I go by she, her pronouns. <laughs> um, I was like, I "Curse think you, Brett's mom." more becoming a more common yeah. name for for women. Isn't there, there's like a famous comedian or actress named Brett? Is it me? <laughs> there has to be. There has to be. Yeah, I'm sure. No, it's not that? Brett Favre. No, no. There's. Do you know what I'm talking about? There's a famous. W- when we named our, our kid, m- my wife and I, not John and I, when we named <laughs> our kids. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks yeah. for clarifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That Everyone always wonders. Uh, <laughs> we went through a lot of different kind of crazy names. Yeah. Um, the one that people get mixed up with as a boy or girl is Palmer, which is a daughter. Um, yeah. So Palmer people definitely get that That's one mixed so up sweet. and she'll probably get that mixed up her whole life you know yeah. but it's okay because it's like a, it's original yeah. yeah it's like a notable name but i think in terms of just plugging anything um my ep and a single that we just released is out on like all streaming nice it's just my name brett landon um and it's like landon spelled like a plane landing l-a-n-d-i-n without yeah without a g 
people are always like Lynn Dunn and Landon. I'm like nope Landon, Landon. <laughs> um, and I have a new single coming out in October which I actually haven't even said out loud or posted on social media so y'all are getting right, like first, right. Exclusive. first dibs on that <laughs> so <laughs> stay, stay on the lookout for that awesome and what's the name of that song it's called Slow Dance in the Kitchen. Nice. Yeah. That um, paints a nice picture. Yeah. it's. That's I beautiful. wrote it for my boyfriend um, before we started doing Long Distance. <laughs> and I never thought that I was going to like record it and put it out. And it's, I think, arguably one of my favorite songs I've ever written. Amazing. Um, and Mark Hill, who just won like AMA Bassist of the Year, is like playing on, on the wow. track. So he's like awesome rocking it on there so yeah that was a really fun recording experience he like walked in i was like whoa (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah i think just that's coming out in october and you know check out my music and follow me on social media it's just my name first and last super easy and i'm so grateful that y'all had me here and then we cheers to beer and chatted about (laughs) music such a gift well thanks for joining us thank you so much for being here yeah all right. And one more cheers. One more cheers. Cheers to the beers. Cheers to the beers. Welcome to the MNO <laughs> Show at Beach Life with Chief of Police, Joe Hoffman. Awesome. Glad to be here. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Thank you for being here. Well, we yeah. usually cheers, but how about a, a fist bump, fist bump or something yeah, gets yeah. this thing going? <laughs> we'll simulate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were ju- as we were just saying, we're doing uh, a Beach Life Ranch uh special basically for our podcast taking the show on the road normally we do at the po- at the uh at the brewery in thousand oaks but um yeah and we always whenever we talk about this festival it's always like this is like one of the nicest festivals that i've ever been to and i've been to hundreds like hundreds and hundreds of festivals around the world yeah it's incredible man you know you know what's cool about it because i've gone to lots of festivals too where i wasn't working yeah and this one is so much better because just just the whole vibe they have, you know, with the whole beach theme and all the different people that it brings in. Right. Um, it's it's a fun event for everybody that comes here, but it's actually super cool to be able to be part of the planning process and create that environment for everyone. That's such a good time. Yeah. What's that like? What's the planning process like? Because how how much time goes into this before the actual? So it really never stops. I mean, because now that there's two a year, yeah, we spend about three or four months planning for each event. Wow. So when you think they're only six months spaced apart, we'll finish this one and then we go into a debrief phase because there's always something to learn. That's yeah. the one thing. There's always something that we can do better. And we spend a little bit of time kind of going over the previous plan, figuring out what we might be able to change so we can make an even better environment. And then we get right into the planning for the next one. And we always make some minor adjustments, but it, you know, a lot goes into the staffing, the equipment, the different types of surveillance that we use. And then, but it, you know, it's also, it's a two part thing, right? So, you know, my position as the chief, I really focus on the safety of the event because that's huge. It's a festival. There's 10,000 plus people here. We got to make sure we have a safe event with all the proper plans in place for any sort of incident that might occur. But it's also a huge opportunity to connect with the community. Yeah. So I, I'm not looking at it just from only the safety component. I'm also looking at it as to how can the police engage in outreach with the community and because one of the big things that we work on is humanizing the badge. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm here today with you guys, because it's so important for people to connect with the police department and realize that we have a bigger function than just enforcing laws and maintaining safety. It's also about, you know, helping the community with all kinds of other things. Yeah. That's, that's what's cool about this event. They really work with us on that. Right. That's yeah. amazing. Did you guys see the horses out there today? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the first time. This is the sixth Beach Life. I know it's only the second Beach Life Ranch, but... You know, the partnerships that we maintain, uh, I reached out to my friend who's the chief of police for Santa Monica PD. They had the horses. And I'm like, hey, that'd be really cool. I think the public would really like that. You know, can we get your horses down? So it's like, yeah, no problem. So the horses come down. And, you know, that's just another way that we're going to get members of the community coming up, talking to the police, asking questions, feeling more comfortable. And then that that also translates into people feeling safer at the event. That's awesome. Yeah. We do. uh, You're going to say something? No, go ahead. Yeah. We do, um, we do a lot of interaction with the police department, with the sheriff's department in Thousand Oaks where we're at. Um, yeah, same, same kind of thing. Like, cause we're kind of like, we're, you know, we're a pretty small town in Thousand Oaks, but, um, our brewery is kind of like the living room of the town. Very cool. And, um, we do, um, you know, all of our sort of 
work that we do to kind of like put back in the community is always with the police department, mo mostly the sheriff's department and, and sometimes with the fire department as well. First responders in general, we, we definitely do a lot of stuff with the um, ER, stuff like that. But um, yeah, definitely it's like, uh, it, I think it's super important to like humanize police, you know, like. And, we have to. And yeah, I mean, it's it, there's there's been some weird tides you know and in, yeah. in in recent years and or recent last decade or whatever and uh yeah so that's, i mean that's that's really smart and it's and important for us to embrace yeah i mean it's no secret that there's been a national narrative that that challenges people's trust with police yeah so you know we could either stick our head in the sand and just kind of go about our business or we could actively work to improve it yeah you know the what i tell the police department when i when i have meetings is we always need to work to increase the level of trust with the community. Yeah. We can never be satisfied for the existing level of trust. And you know, if some police officer 2000 miles does something away, does something bad, then all of a sudden it reflects negatively on all the police. Yeah. And I think that by maintaining those partnerships with the community and constantly working to develop trust, when something does happen 2000 miles away, my goal is that the citizens in our community say, well, that wouldn't happen with Three Down Beach PD. Right. And that's because we're constantly working to maintain those partnerships and engage in that outreach. Yeah, that's awesome. Did you grow up out this way? or where I grew up in the, in the South Bay, yeah. Did, like Rancho okay. Palos Verdes, San Pedro area. My dad worked for LAPD okay. for, for 28 years, and um, he lived in Redondo Beach. Oh, where And really? so, yeah, so when I was in high school, uh, I decided I wanted to be a police officer. And uh, he said, don't do it. Be a lawyer. <laughs> and I'm like, why be a lawyer? He said, well, because you get weekends off. Everybody, you know, it's, right. you don't have to work holidays. And this, and I said, no, 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 no. I, I want to be a police officer. And he goes, OK. I said, well, if you're going to do it all over again, where would you go work? And he goes, man, I go work for Redondo Beach PD. LAPD is great, but it's such a big agency. Yeah, he goes, right. it's just different. He goes, I'd go to one of these smaller beach PDs. So anyways, so when I was 19 years old, I applied at Redondo Beach PD as a cadet. And in the meantime, I worked as a volunteer. And then I got hired, and now I'm in my 30th year with Redondo Beach PD and wow. worked pretty much every assignment, every level. And, uh, you know, it's been an honor. It's a great community, and it's been uh, really nice to see all how, it, how it's evolved over the years. And uh, this festival alone is really improving the overall perception of the community, the way that um, it puts Redondo Beach on the map, quite frankly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's neat. I mean, look at you guys. You're from Thousand Oaks, yeah. and here you are in Redondo Beach. Yeah. Had this festival not been occurring, you probably wouldn't be here. You'd be at some other festival somewhere That's else. That's right. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah, really exactly. cool. No, and there and there's definitely, um, you know, it feels, you know, we've t we we just talked on the past one, like there, you know, um, uh, in us working with, you know, as a partner with this with this event, and uh, they're they're super on top of all the details and making it nice for people, make people feel comfortable when they go in there. There's all you know all this stuff and it definitely has a, it feels safe and you know so really appreciate that and that yeah. it's and that those are the things i think when people they walk in and they don't know it's it's almost subconscious or whatever but there's a feeling there like hey this is safe i'm gonna have a good day i can bring my kids here i can do whatever you know like and that's and um that stuff goes um unnoticed a lot of times and so it's true thank you yeah and it's important that um people when they see the police at these events, it's something different. Like with the hats, for example, last year we had a white straw hat and everyone loved it. And I was like, okay, cool, let's do a different one this year. Right. So this year we did the black straw hats. We actually put a Beach Life logo on it. And I don't know if you noticed, but I actually had some uh, little bullhorns made and there's bullhorns on the motorcycles nice. and the police cars and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's just cool because people walking in, that's the first thing they're gonna see, right? Yeah. It's not like, oh, the police are here, whatever. It's like, oh, look at that police car. It's bull right. horns on it. Oh, right. my God, that's so cool. All the cops are wearing cowboy hats. You're yeah. part of the you know? event. Yeah. The biggest problem for me is I make these cool hats, and then the cops are like, can we wear them all year? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Hang on, fellas. We, you, you can wear them for the three days of the event, and then we're going to have to shelve them for a little bit. It's a souvenir after that. You know? But but it's kind of cool because it allows uh, – it kind of helps drive the culture for for, for the organization, for, for the police department. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, this is so cool. They – they kind of let us like really get into the event. Yeah, yeah, we have a job. We have to maintain, you know, the safety and, and stick with the plan. But everybody gets to, you know, feel like they're really engaged in it. So, so Amazing. that's all part of it. And that's fun. That's kind of like what I was saying when we first started talking about how it's half really having a solid plan for the safety so everyone can enjoy the event, and half taking the opportunity to engage in community outreach and and marketing for the police department for for PR purposes. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate you.
Thank yeah. you for thanks so much for having me, guys. Do. Yeah, yeah thank I really you. Appreciate it. Blast. <laughs> Too bad we can't cheers with a beer, but maybe in a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save <laughs> you one. Good. Yeah, appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here, play some songs for you. Thanks for hanging out. to the MO show at Beach Life Ranch with Anna Boss. Yay. Nice. Yay. Hey Cheers. guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. <laughs> this is like a dream podcast situation, I think, <laughs> to like drink beer and just talk about music. That's yeah. that's what I do every day pretty much. <laughs> just no one's recording. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Here we go. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. So what so uh you're originally from California, yes. San Diego. Yes. And you live in Nashville now? Or I where live are you in, at? yeah, live in Nashville. Grew up in Poway, so like right outside yeah. of San Diego, and had just the best childhood ever. And think about moving back all the time. But <laughs> um, Nashville is where I get to do music and chase my dream of writing songs and playing them for people. So that's where I live. That's, that's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Have you ever been to the American Legion Hall on Monday nights in Nashville? Okay. Honky Tonk Night. I've been actually <laughs> yes, that was one of the first places I played okay. in Nashville. Oh, funny really? enough, um, but I'm just now connecting the dots that that's where it was. Yeah, yeah. it's a vibe. That's a vibe. Yeah, it's amazing. Monday nights they do Honky Tonk Night. I think it's the same band that plays every Monday, and then they have other bands come in. Sick. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if I played on a Monday because I I think I would have disappointed people with my yeah, Monday's like very specific honky tonk. Yeah, stuff, but they do other stuff. Other I got to check it out then. Yes. Okay, no, cool. that's super fun. There's like like 80 year old veterans dancing with, you know, let's go girls like your age. And y- yeah, <laughs> living their best <laughs> life. <It's amazing>. Yeah, <laughs> and the drinks they pour the cocktails are really strong. And yeah, it, it gets loose need. pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And then also there's, I'm not going to remember the name of it right now, but like you can walk up back onto the main street and then just up to the right a little bit. Yeah. There's a little bar and a bunch of the guys, a bunch of like, I think studio musicians or whatever, all kind of pitched in together and they opened up this little tiny bar. Sick. And so they all play, they just play there with their friends. I love that. And oh. it's like, like, there'll just be five guys, and like five of the best musicians you've ever seen in your yeah. life. Yeah. So jamming that's what's crazy about nashville is not only like how many people do music but how many people do music so well yeah i remember when i first got to nashville i was like all right time to make my dreams come true and then like sitting in a coffee shop and a girl playing and sounding like mariah carey and i was like (laughs) oh okay so we're all we're all like great at this and like chasing the dream and it's crazy but also the community is amazing, so it doesn't feel like that. Like, oh, yeah. you're better than I am. It's like, mm-hmm. cool. How can we help each other and grow? Yeah. And it's collaborative. Co- yeah. 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 Right. Definitely. Yeah, you can walk down Broadway on a Monday, and there's 500 bands playing. Yes. In four stories of versions, or whatever, and like, 
they're all like some of the best musicians on the planet. Seriously. And they're just and they're playing in front of eight people. Yeah. You know, like it's insane. But they're just keeping their chops totally on point yeah totally yeah. yeah i have many friends who are in that like grind of like you know they'll yeah. go out and do the weekend gigs with fill in the blank like country artists that you hear on the radio all the time and then they go and play broadway because it's yeah. like well we can't get enough of it and we yeah. want to just keep playing yeah yeah it's a great town it's awesome yeah. for sure so you're gearing up for a tour I am. Your October looks pretty busy. It's very busy. Um, I am going out on the road with a band named Truesdale, and I'm so excited. It's uh, the first time I've done a tour like this where I'm gone from, I mean, literally like today all the way through October 27th, I think is our last date. So it shows pretty much every night in <laughs> different cities across the country and one in Canada. And wow. it's going to be really fun. Like I, s- I saw you're going to first app. You're playing seventh street entry. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've spent a lot of time there. I love I'm from it. the Midwest. What should I, what should I know about it? Well, first Ave is like the home of Prince. Okay. That's, okay. You yeah. Know, if you ever seen anything about Prince and, the whole Purple Rain thing. That yeah. Was, that was all first to have. Wild. Yeah, yeah. So 7th Street is the other stage in the building, but it's a cool it's a cool venue. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited. It's fun. I think, like, when I was first starting out in music, like, you know, you, you only picture, like, the stadium level where you're mm-hmm. like, that's going to be sick. But, like, <laughs> I've learned to love um, just the really intimate venues where I feel like you can connect and you can look someone in the eye yeah. and, like, it's just this human to human connection that to me like keeps me getting up the next morning and wanting to play another show um so i love it i'm excited to just play these these venues and like meet new fans and and see old friends and yeah yeah live the dream that's amazing yeah and probably not sleep a lot also but that's just par (laughs) for the course (laughs) yeah the road's tough yeah it's not what people think no there's no glamour there's not really (laughs) there's like one moment where you're like ah this is what i thought it would be and then that goes away so quickly (laughs) um yeah yeah, it's funny i feel like a lot of people in nashville when i first got there and said oh you know my goal is i want to be an artist i want to tour they were like there's a lot of sacrifices yeah. you got to make to be on tour. And I was like, yeah, yeah whatever. And yeah. then when I'm on the road driving at 2.30 in the morning, like yeah. just trying to get to the next place, I'm like, yeah, I do get what they mean yeah. when they said mm-hmm. sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, we just have to say it's 23 hours a day of brutal travel and then an hour of enjoyment yes. on the stage. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. Why are we that way? I don't know, but yeah. we have to be. Yeah. What, what keeps you sane on the road? Um, a really good cup of coffee is mm-hmm. big. Um, honestly, good podcasts. Like that's what gets <laughs> me through drives more than music nice. does sometimes. Um, so that's a big one, but yeah, mostly coffee. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coffee becomes important for sure. It does. It does. So my wife's favorite song of yours is, uh, she, she relate. This is my wife over here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she has a relatable experience to a song you wrote. Oh, no. About um, having a heart broken by a boy that she never actually even Ooh. met. Yeah. Oh, you've never met him? <laughs> 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 Who is it? Like Sorry, Harry maybe, Styles? Maybe, <laughs> 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 maybe not met, but never dated. I guess. Okay. Sorry, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I feel like you threw her right under I the bus did, and was like, yeah, I she'd did. never met her. Yeah, her heart is super fragile. So, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, same. I'm very sensitive. Um, uh, one, I'm so sorry because it's a tragic feeling, but at the same time, <laughs> what can you do other than just fall head first? <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like I, through like middle school and high school and even through like the early parts of college, just like really was like, oh, this boy is the one. And he was like, first of all, we like we sit next to each other in a class like we've never <laughs> like actually talked before. Um, and so that just inspired this song didn't even date. And some people are like, I totally relate to that. And then some people are like, you are crazy. And I'm like, probably both. <laughs> <Yeah>. but, <laughs> but yeah, so that one's fun to play on the road for sure. Because it's just, I feel like it's a girl thing too. Like we're just, we're just living our lives. Yeah. Falling head first for people. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So your last, f- or your full length was in 2022? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that came out and um, it was like a really interesting mix of feelings. I had didn't even date which like i i love that song it's so fun to play live um and then i put out a song called younger version of myself that was just it's this really honest like basically letter i wrote to my um younger self 
And when I was releasing it, I was like, this feels good. This feels like, you know, therapy and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then when I put it out, I was like, oh, that's really personal <laughs> and like really hard to sing on a stage and, and talk about. And um, in some moments I've found like strength in that. And in other moments it's been it's been really difficult. So I the farther away I get from that project, the more like I guess like mixed feelings mm -hmm. I have in that way about it. But um, I've been working on new music, which I'm so excited about and just feels like a really honest and un not unhinged, but kind <laughs> of unhinged, like um, unbridled version of, of my artistry that I haven't really shared with people yet. So right. I'm psyched. You're loosening up. Yeah, totally. When I first got to Nashville, I think I was so eager to just hear someone say, like, you're meant to do this, that I just was like, oh, you you thought that was cool? Like, let me do, like, kind of like a like monkey. Like, it was not healthy <laughs> at all. It's just like, watch me dance. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the more that I've gotten older and just become more comfortable in my own skin and with my own writing, I've just realized that, like, the best thing I can offer my fans and myself is this like honest interpretation of who I am as an artist and not try and be some other person. Cause that's not what people show up to a show for. Like they mm -hmm. want to see Anna Voss, um, just very, yeah, purely. So that's what I'm leaning into with this new music and it feels good. That's amazing. Yeah. You are wise beyond your years. You Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just keep laying that on tape and, and you're going to have a, very long successful career fingers crossed yeah. otherwise i'm gonna be probably living with my parents in san diego <laughs> which is not a bad alternative no. honestly <laughs> <laughs> i tell them that all the time i'm like i will be moving back <laughs> yeah but very cool yeah anything else you want to uh you want to plug that you have coming up um some exciting news i so on top of doing my own artistry i write songs for other artists, especially nice. in country music. Um, and I just wrote the new Maddie and Tay single that just went to country radio wow. and it was third most added at radio. And it's my, my first like single as a songwriter. So oh, wow. I'm just Congrats. really, thanks. I'm really crossing my fingers and just hoping it goes up the charts and yeah, I'm hanging on for dear That's life. <laughs> yeah. That's so. actually where it's at. So like, yeah, it's a lot easier than touring. If yes. you can have somebody else go door to door and sell <laughs> you the songs that you wrote. For sure. <laughs> well, I definitely Not thought. Not trying to steer you right, <laughs> No. <laughs> trust. Trust me. Yeah. Um, it's funny because like when when the f I heard the song was first being recorded, I was like, oh man, like the release day for this song is going to be so much less um, anxiety filled because it's not like it's not my voice on the song so I won't be as attached to it and of course the day of that was so untrue and I just refreshed the page and refreshed the page and just watched it like it was my own baby so I've learned to like set it down a little bit more now but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely obsessed a little bit <laughs> yeah that's amazing yeah I've often referred to like songs as babies too. I say that too. Like they're all like, so what's your favorite song that you do? And it's like, I'm not, I all, can't. Yeah. I love them all the same. They're, they're all my babies. Yes. Yeah. It's so hard to pick. Yeah. Sometimes some of them, you know, you do have favorites, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but yeah. that's awesome. Anything else we want to talk about? How's the beer? How do you like that beer? It's really good. It's really good. So this is in redondo beach like the, the brewery is or no the the brewery is in thousand oaks okay okay very that's cool that's where we're at yeah okay i'm gonna i'm gonna be back yes. you'll see me one day with <laughs> lots of friends yeah. <laughs> it's really yummy you should come play there sometime i would sign yep. me up <coughs> we have live music there as well heck yeah do but you yeah. play there ever or yeah okay we cool just played uh for my birthday on late july yeah nice yeah. yeah that's fun yeah it was it was a good time it was a good time um, p currently my band OPM we play like once a year basically we play on my birthday every <laughs> year pretty much is, is what's happening it's a great situation <laughs> I <Yeah>. think <laughs> it is pretty gluttonous as a, <laughs> as mm -hmm. a musician just like, hey let's have my band play on my birthday <laughs> yeah um, but yeah no we have um, yeah we're in Thousand Oaks it's an awesome spot we're, d we're the craft beer sponsor here at the Beach Life Ranch Festival and the, the regular Beach Life Festival we did as well yeah back cool. in May and um yeah so it's awesome that we get to be a part yeah. of this thing it's so a sick. cool vibe here yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well just like walking to the green room from the stage and you're on sand is like a great situation yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah it's definitely one of the better festivals we've talked about a bunch like 
done a lot of festivals. Yeah. Like this one's just very well done and it's really cool. Great people here, great community. Yeah, good vibes yeah. all around. Yeah. For sure. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having so me. Thank cool. you for the beer. What a yes. What a Cheers treat. one more time. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. It's great. Looking to meet forward you. to watching you tonight. Thanks. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Party. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, <laughs> guys. Welcome to the Emino Show at Beach Life Ranch with Raphael McMaster of Indivisible Arts. Nice. Hey, thanks Welcome. for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Yeah. So tell us, what is Indivisible Arts? Oh, I'm excited to tell you about this. This is a new kind of nonprofit. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit. We teach creativity, consciousness, and connection to youth through art. And we're seeing transformational changes in the youth. We're getting kids off ADD medication. We're helping kids get sober. And to the everyday universal kid to be able to have wisdom and consciousness, to understand what mindfulness, awareness, gratitude, hope, inspiration, joy, kindness, all those things mean as functional tools. Well, this is a generation that needs it the most. What do you mean by connectedness? Oh, wow. So when we teach connectedness, we teach it as four base cornerstones of a pyramid, right? Connection. So we teach about connection to ourselves, as in connection to our own souls. Oh, and how do we get there? Oh, through writing, reading, uh, art, creativity, music, surfing. So connection to ourselves. We talk about connection to each other and service and the power of service. Connection to beauty, thinking that art, rather, rather, love is an energy. Yeah. Love is an energy of experiencing beauty so how to connect to that beauty that love from that way then how to connect to nature these four cornerstones with the capstone being connection to a higher power of their own understanding this is a powerful concept you come to our youth program you'll see 200 kids across five days that all have a higher power of their own understanding they don't even know what i believe that's part of it. i'm not going to tell you guys what i believe what do you believe let's put it on the whiteboard what do you call it god universal laws Laws of science, consciousness, um, love, uh, mother earth, father sky. Cool. Now pick from here. Now you have a base layer. You have a, a space to begin to walk towards, to find that internal connectedness, the connectedness to a higher power of their own understanding. It's a, it's a profound experience. That's profound dope. experience. That's awesome. Very cool. And what, what made you found this? Mm. Where, this where, where is the... Where'd the purpose come from? The purpose came from uh, eight years ago, I got sober. Eight years ago, I got sober from Adderall, Vicodin, and Xanax. They had me on this trifecta. Listen, while things were going good, I was having a great time. And, you know, no one knew, right? Uh, they all doctor prescribed. Mm -hmm. Part of the opioid epidemic and need Pain to get work done. You know, all yeah. the things until you find out you turn around and you're handcuffed to it. Yeah. The backbone needed to make that kind of profound transformation as to how I respond and relate to reality and all the tools along the way helped me create a mental construct for myself that made me realize, well, heck, this could help an eight-year-old with their homework. This can help a 16-year-old with their stress. And that was the creation of the creative wisdom tools essentially taking the same tools that I use to get sober and that I use to help other men and other people get sober and take them and give them to anyone else. Because we began to realize we all need this kind of supportive understanding, awareness, acceptance, intention, gratitude, compassion, forgiveness, connection. Shouldn't be just for when a person's in a jam. Yeah. And quite honestly, sometimes I feel like we're all in a jam. It just looks different for everybody. Yeah, that's legit. Yeah. <laughs> And then explain your um, your logo. Oh, yeah. So our logo was designed by a seven-year-old, Luca Iovicelli, which I think Luke is probably 13 or 14. And Luke, if you're watching this, shout out, brother. <laughs> um, it's a division sign with an X through it. Now, at the time, we were teaching the tool of intention, how to have a goal, how to turn it into a three-dimensional holographic vision in your mind with sight, sound, smell, touch, everything. You're living in it and then fuse it with heart energy as if you're envisioning that it's coming true. You're feeling how good this thing feels like it's, that it's coming true. What's happening down on a neuropsychological level is that you're releasing dopamine, endorphins, serotonin. Your subconscious says, 
anything related to this vision is good. We like it. It gives us feel good chemicals. Let's go towards it. And that begins to bear out on the 2000 micro decisions we have throughout each day. I begin swimming towards the thing I want is the power of intention, the secret manifesting. It's kind of all the same thing. So we're teaching about intention. Then we bring it over to relate it to art. And it's how do we turn this into a symbol? So there's the ancient practice of creating sigils or symbols that have an intention behind them. And so those, we teach this to the kids. This kid, his symbol was, I don't want to hate math so much. <laughs> so we had a division sign. And he was like, ah, against math. <laughs> I'm like, no, wait, no division. <laughs> you know, and, and, and uh, that to me shows and reminds me how I can be surprised by things because I woke up that day not thinking some seven-year-old was going to create a dope logo. <clears throat> yeah. So it keeps me curious. So yeah. no division is connected. Unity. The unity. Yeah. 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 Because my mind can be divided. Absolutely. My mind is always divided now. My, my energy, absolutely. My time is divided. But my spirit, I don't know that my soul can be divided. I don't think it can. For me, I don't think it can. Hmm. So that to me is what's indivisible, right? Is soul. Is soul. In a time where things are getting more rampantly just <laughs> AI. Here we go. Speed it up. Here we go. Here we go. Where are we going to get to? I don't know. Let's find out. We're all going to find out together. And soul is going to be something. I think soul's on a return. I'm telling you. I'm calling, I'm calling my shot now. Or the four or five year arc. The sense of being present in body. Because we'll say present, aware, mindfulness. That's cool. Yeah. What's present? My soul's present. Yeah. Right? I'm bringing that, the power. And not, you know, I, I think, uh, yeah low-key apologetic for people to be like spirit soul not everyone feels comfortable saying yeah. that, right but how can i how can i bring that energy and that juice yeah. into my body if i'm not even willing to discuss it or talk about it to myself yeah it's interesting in a world that like you know divisiveness is common word more probably more common than in mm. ever in my life yeah. at this time right yeah. so like yeah. uh, it's an interesting concept to try and break down like what is not divisible like what what is what of us is, what is something true. that you cannot divide, that's right. like where we all unite what, what is what universal is, what is that yeah right yeah all right what is what 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 is the universal language yeah. right art is a universal language yeah love is a universal language music is a universal language yeah. that's why we're here this weekend yeah say dance the earliest form of art that works Maybe mathematics or science or light frequency, something. I don't know the right way to name that. So I got five answers to that question. Yeah. I don't know, many, I don't know any other answers. And if it can answer w what is the universal language and it's one of those five things, then that's what we do at Indivisible Arts. Yeah. Literally, we have a compound, 3,800 square foot creative laboratory with a music studio, fashion lab, creative design center. Uh, downstairs, you have a spray paint alley. You've got an area for dance, movement, yoga, teaching is where all the consciousness training goes. You've got a back area where we do pottery, sculpture, 3D VR, digital illustration, animation, all the things, right? Five days a week. We've said zero. We've said no to zero kids in seven years, 30 to 40% of our kids at any given time are on uh, scholarship. And it's, beca it's because of organizations like Beach Life that contribute to us, That's support amazing. us, yeah. right? And connect us with, we're so lucky that our nonprofit has been able to make meaningful partnerships with Da Vinci Rise, which is a high school for uh, high schoolers connected to the foster care and criminal justice system. Walk with Sally, which is families and, and uh, kids affected by cancer. Uh, Friendship Foundation, which is the special needs community. Uh, da Vinci Rise, which is kids from broken homes. And we do all the universal stuff too, right? And then I'm, we're, I'm going to personally take every seventh grader in the Hermosa School District through these creative wisdom tools this year. Um, I'm excited about that. That's real cool. That's very cool. Yeah. So your connection with Beach Life, they, they uh, are a sponsor to you, but sure. you also brought art yeah, yeah they've been I so saw gracious the, I saw to the us. shark yes thank you for bringing up the shark right um so they're so gracious to us my boy uh, josh barnes aka love and loyalty uh painted that shark that rad whatever 32 foot shark and then i got to go in there and graphic design based on his stuff a 400 square foot um mural digital uh, graphic mural behind him uh we did the whole thing like in one day together um uh we designed you know six different artist covered cubes boxes like these like 
you know, six foot tall cubes, uh, a bunch of teepees, a bunch of murals, uh, but all in all, like our relationship with Beach Life and the opportunity that they've given us, everything's been uh, just a great experience. And for so many of these young artists and the artists we work with, um, uh, these kids, the youth, the volunteers, the teens, you know, we got a lot of love for Beach Life uh, in, our, in our community because of the opportunities they give us. It's a great win-win. That's, That's awesome. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, we're so glad we got to meet you and you got to come and... Yeah. Yeah. And, and So what's your favorite it? smell? My favorite yeah. smell? <sighs> Maybe I would, I would banana s- Laffy Taffy. Oh, seriously? <laughs> I, don't I don't know if we could be friends. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, they, you seem cool at first, but now, really? <laughs> of know. all the smells available. How about oh. you? <laughs> I, I don't know why. I went like deep, old school, like grape. Okay. Hubba Great. Bubba. Wow, you guys are both very like going fruit flavored wow. fruit well, candies on the mind. Both of us are like artificial. Yeah, well, I was no. gonna say Christmas, right? The pine tree <laughs> and yeah. you know cinnamon, some vanilla, yeah. some apple pie. That well, sounds better. Sounds better. I was gonna say. I think you thought I it out though. You had the question. I, yeah. I mean, I've been thinking about it for a minute. What's well, your favorite I, feeling? Initially, I was My favorite feeling. Say, uh, yeah. Oh, euphoria. Hmm. Yeah. Can't tell if I'm coming or going, but I'm joyful and present. <laughs> Ooh, that sounded good. I was going to say bourbon, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to bum you out. So that's why I went to it was somewhere between Cotton Candy and Laffy Taffy. But. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tell thanks. me real quick. What, what does Tarantula stand for? Tarantula. Wow. Um, so Tarantula Hill is actually a, a hill that exists yeah. in the middle of uh, the Conejo Valley, which is where the brewery is in Thousand Oaks, California. Um. And um, it's cool. It's like in a little valley. It's like the highest. It's the highest peak yeah. in the valley, but it's just a little tiny hill, and it's surrounded by some kind of giant mounds. But from yeah. the top of that hill, you can see the whole valley. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was born and raised there in Thousand Oaks. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, um, it's a very slow, kind of sleepy town, and um, and I'm I kind of always grew up, you know, wanting to explore and. You know, and then also the over the hill, you know, we're on the other side of the valley and over the hill it was L.A., which was, you know, oh, if you're out there, it was like, you know, the scary side right, of the hill. Right, right, you know. over there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was always... So uh, natural, Thousand Oaks. Yeah. yeah. Still kind of... Yeah. yeah, it's and beautiful I was, up there. I, was I go very, through a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I was very tempted by the uh, the other side of that hill. And yeah. when I turned 20, I moved into Hollywood and, and lived there. Yeah. Um, and had a music career and all that stuff and started my family and then had the opportunity to go back and yeah. we opened this brewery out there, whatever came back. So came back to another town and have a new, uh, appreciation for, you know, that town I grew up in, which yeah, I, I almost yeah. hated it when I was a kid cause yeah. it was so boring almost, sure, but well now making it cooler with little kids. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's, I'm so, so lucky to, to be able to do go you guys, do you guys ever sponsor art shows art events nonprofits, yeah. things like that yeah 100 uh, because we have amazing badass art shows Let's every month well you'll see victoria white down here she's in our crew yeah. all those artists you know we have amazing art shows and we always need yeah. uh you know 100 percent, 100 percent awesome Let's brews do, uh, do you know have you ever heard of risk sure the artist yeah he designed it yeah he, butterflies yes he yeah, these yeah, are yeah. he designed he's very cool. Uh, very he, cool he has an amazing art gallery in thousand oaks yeah. it's called the compound uh, yeah. We do lots of stuff with him. He curates, you know, a lot of the arts, you know, okay. all that stuff. Okay. Um, but then we also have um, a couple other local artists that curate shows. We do um, twice a year. We do. Um, we have a, on the back of our building this big giant wall, and we have we invite in like I think six to eight graffiti artists, mm. and they all come in and they basically paint a. A rectangle it's like a can art yeah. contest yeah and then like the first year risk you know pick the winner and that's then cool. their art went on the can that's cool um and then right this on. this last one though the guys that won the last one did it um but yeah we do we do a lot of art shows yeah okay. and we uh we would love to have you for sure fantastic fantastic yeah. um i'll end with this okay right? if, if i just take you guys for a second because i have this second like what's the point of art Right, because it's such a big question, and for having asked that question again and again and again for eight years, landed on this: that art is the language of the soul. Right, art is the language of the soul. So, if I'm doing art and I'm creating, then my soul is present. Yeah, that's powerful. 
be able to teach that to another kid. So now, because it's you do art and you feel good afterwards, but you can't quite quantify it or qualify. You don't know why. I'm in a better mood. It's because your soul's in your body. The same yeah. way with your surfing, skating, playing a sport. You're hyper aware. You're present. Your blood's glowing. Like, yeah. except art you can do anywhere, and art you can do when you're any age, yeah. right? And so I just want to make that 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 if I if I have a second to say anything, it's just that art is the language of the soul, and it. Cooking can be an art. Gardening can be an art. Reading can be an art. And the purpose of being able to see cooking as an art, instead of just, I'm just cooking whatever mindlessly, I'm going to eat something, I'm watching the TV, to I'm cooking as an art. It's because if I'm cooking as an art, an art's language of the soul, then my soul's present. And now my soul is present while I'm cooking, and I'll be damned if I don't start feeling better. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for giving me giving my, my giving me my rant. Yeah, love it. Cool. Uh, yeah. All right, Thanks, Tarantula man. Hill, right on. You yes, guys are red. <laughs> cool. Thank you so All much. Right. May the force be with you. Have an amazing festival. <laughs> <All right. laughs>
Um, but yeah, I started at Red Light in February. So I've been working there like eight months and I work for David Klein, who's our uh, GM. And it's really fun working for him because he actually doesn't manage a roster of his own. Um, and he also started right around when I did just a little bit before. So we're kind of paving our own way together. Um, but I like to say that he's very much a glue guy of the company. He, I like to think that he's like the front door of the company. Um, what does Red Light do though? Red Light is the biggest, they, they call it the biggest independent management company in the world. Ind- independent, I don't really know what they mean by that. It's basically <laughs> the biggest management company in the world. They're not owned by some corporate conglomerate. Yeah, but right. still, either way, biggest yeah. in the world. Um, what other what other artists besides Larkin Poe do they have? You know, we cover pretty much every genre. Country is crushing it in Nashville. Um, so we do Chris Stapleton, Luke Bryan, Laney Wilson. Um, yeah, those are some big R's. Jordan Davis, Marin Morris uh, in the country lane. And then we got... Wait, is it Marin Morris or Marin Morris? Marin Morris. Uh, I didn't know that. I, I was... I had no idea. But she's also phasing out of the country lane. Really? As of late. Yeah. She's great. She's just absolute stunning live show. Just great. She rips it. And, uh, yeah, we got a great electronic team in L.A. Um, Odessa, Grammatic, Closey, a bunch of Duke DeMont. Really fun. I mean, it's all over the board. And then, you know, we're in the pop lane, too. Sabrina Carpenter. Um, But it's it's cool that red light is such a big company and yet it's all these managers so management company like as when you're big like red light it's basically a bunch of different entities their own managers with their own rosters who can operate in their own facets and their own way of doing things which is really nice ever all them all the managers have their own freedom to do things they want they the way they want to but on top of that we also have a central services team that's just absolutely through and through like just crushing it so like digital marketing um tour operations um digital strategy all this kind of stuff that each manager that can then lean on and use as they see fit radio team the whole bit um that's awesome so it's kind of it's it's nice like as a manager there it's really like customized to you it's like you can take advantage of the company's central services as you see fit uh, to meet your needs you can lean on them heavily you can so I think the word independent can represent a couple different things in that case. Like John said, traditionally it's it's not yeah. a big corporate that's running it, but it sounds like you have independence within. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Within it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely like a new model, right? Like that did, that model didn't exist, you know, back in my day. You know, and like uh, when I one of my early jobs in the industry, I worked for a management company. We managed producers. Um, not it's not as much so much artist order, but then like when the management companies that existed then they just managed but like the function like you're talking about that central service thing like in, in today's climate where you can excel to kind of the highest level without even having even maybe a record label or you know some of these other things or whatever so it's it's interesting like it's just a different world in general. So, like having having a company like that that has all those tools for you uh, to help you succeed, or whatever. Then that's you know, before it was so segmented, and and you had to have like, you know, my era like just you know, I c- my, my record drop like right as Napster exploded, sure. right? Um, had had I my record come out like two years prior, like I'd I'd be in a different universe, you know. Um, but you then you had to have a manager, an agent, a record label, a publishing company, mm. a merch deal, you know, whatever. And then Napster sort of. And then also there was this concept too, like that the labels were the man, you know, which um, which is sad because people really got on board with Napster to try and take the man down. But like. Um, and it's funny, like I said, independent, like the, the first label, I, 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 my first job in the industry was at Island Records, which at that time was the largest independent record label <laughs> in the world. 
and it, they had Bob Everyone Marley. That tagline, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was it was literally that they were like Chris Blackwell was was the guy. He had U two. Okay. And U two was like U two was on an independent label, at the peak of their career, and then uh, he finally sold to Polygram. Which I believe was, oh, I was going to say French, but I think they're actually like Danish. They were Danish or something. But mm-hmm. yeah, so they were, um, yeah, and, and, and very shortly after that sale happened, he la- he quit the company. He left the company. Like, he, it, it fucked it up. And he was the. He got his second payout, doesn't he? He's done. He got his payout. <laughs> he was able to pay you two the money that yeah. he owed them. You should get one at the yeah. transaction and you get one a little bit later once yeah. you hand it off. Yeah, he yeah. probably <laughs> was looking for that as the exit order, but they kept him on as the CEO mm. and then they pissed him off and he's like, fuck you, I'm going to go <laughs> buy hotels in Miami. But anyways, yeah, so that's amazing. Um, what a great gig you got yeah. straight out of school. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. I mean, I'm, I sit here speaking on this podcast <laughs> in a place of humility you know like I'm, just, I'm 22 trying to figure out where i what lane i want to be in yeah. what i want to do you're in you a great lane what do you what do you think you i mean for other kids like that are in school right now and like want to get into music like what do you do right to get this job not a lot honestly <laughs> um i mean talking to people really like i actually was gonna my plan was to be a doctor I was going to go to med school. I graduated with a neuroscience degree. I was like fully pre-med and like halfway through college. I just had, you know, I always had these voices in the back of my head, kind of like, cause I was always a music kid growing up and it was always like very much a hobby. For, I loved it. It was my love and like my passion, but like it was never going to be the real thing for me. It was just, I knew that like, Oh, this is a hobby. And I'm from like, you know, small town, Wisconsin. We're like, which people, small people, town? Nina, yeah, Nina, heard Wisconsin. Yeah, You've heard of it? Yeah, no I know. Way. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. We're in Redondo Beach, California, and someone knows <laughs> Nina, Wisconsin. Population twenty. Well, 000. tell them where you're from. Well, I'm from Minneapolis. Okay, okay. I went to school in La- lacrosse, lacrosse for a year yep. and a half. Yeah, yeah, so I met. He knows the region. I met too many Wisconsin people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is it, is they'll all laugh when then? I say that. Only, I'm only a Vikings fan because of Green Bay Packers. Because everybody was like, oh, Vikings suck. And I'm like, I don't watch football. I never watched football. I didn't grow up in a family that watched football. Mm-hmm. You guys are crazy. Yeah, right. Nuts. And nuts. I'm like, finally, I was like, all right, fine. Yeah, I'm a Vikings fan. <laughs> Jeez, leave me alone, you know? Yeah. So. Better wear the hordes than the cheese head, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, I mean, like, growing up, it was like you don't meet people that are, like, work in the music business. Like, that's not even – as a no. child, I was like, that's not even a, a reality. Like, that's not a real thing. That's just, like, something of, like, dreams and movies kind of. Yeah, there's so no yeah, entertainment industry out there. Exactly. None, period. So that was never, never even crossed my mind. But you know, I came out here f- for school at USC, and uh, yeah, eventually those voices telling me like, th- this is not what you want to do. You love music, and yeah. you want to be in 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 this space. Like eventually, just took over, and I was like, all right, might as well try. Ended up landing an internship. Found found a red light internship on their website. Um, they hired me. And at that point, I was, like, basically graduated. I, like, went under the guise of, like, I'm still a student, but I was taking, like, one music class at night. So I was just, like, sitting in the office, like, like a 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and they didn't have enough work for me. So I was just like, fine, I'll just float around and say hi to people, make friends. And uh, lo and behold, I met my current boss, and he had just joined the company, and he was like, I don't have an assistant yet. I need help with all these projects. And so I was like, okay, yeah. I was doing work for him, and eventually, like, after a couple of weeks, I was like, wait a second, I'm basically just your assistant because I'm doing I'm doing <laughs> all the assistant jobs for you. So I sat him down, and I was like, all right, man, I'm here, I'm done with school. Let's let's do this thing. And, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, now I'm in work for him. He's just a great guy, great mentor. Um, and yeah, I mean, I I'm just trying to I call myself. I mean, the, sure, the title is assistant right now, but I like to think of it. I'm, I'm a sponge right now. My yeah. job is to just meet people in all different sectors of the business and understand because I learn what people are doing on their day to day, what, what I want to be doing um, because I don't know what I want to do and I don't know where I want to be, but God. yeah, well give yourself more credit. Like you, you didn't just, it didn't, it wasn't an accident. It was you not know, an accident. You know, you, you, you got yourself here and your timing, timing helps, but yeah. you know, like 
I guess in all things in life, you just got to be you know, talkative, outgoing, and yeah. personal. Like, just yeah. be curious. Be curious. Just dive in. Approach people and, yeah. like, be curious about what they're doing and yep. where they're coming from. Yep, for sure. And be a, being a sponge, we talk about all the time, stay in a white belt. You're a white belt right now, so just soak it up, and you're you're on a great yeah. path. We were hoping we would get Larkin Poe. But you're the next best thing. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. <laughs> we we it's really. Funny. So see, I don't know. How do you guys know Jaybird? Jaybird, uh, I I met him. I produced a record that he he played bass on. I'm I would I produced a lot of records and I had I had my own little label for a while. He was signed to M and O Records. This is called the M and O Show. Okay. He's a part of this whole thing. Uh, so I got none of this content. I met Jaybird 30 minutes ago. Nice. Because he was like. Oh, what's up, Ed Sheeran? Get your ass over here. <laughs> <laughs> Which Perfect. I was like, all right. Yeah, Jaybird is a is a great guy to know. He's a great human. Um, yeah, he's been he's been uh, he was our talent scout for today. So, I mean, yeah, he did a great job at that. He did. I <laughs> mean, he he didn't get Larkin Powell. Yeah, but uh, he got the next hey, best he thing. He got probably like the eighth next best no, thing. No, next. Maybe. We're going next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We cut right down to the nitty gritty. We're getting the real story from you. I loved hearing your story, man. That was like very similar to my story. When I, I, I started at Island Records, I started as an intern. I worked for free for a little while. And then, and then finally, uh, they hired me as a scout and I made, I made $1,500 every three months. I got a, I got a quarterly check of $1,500. I had a crushing it. Yeah. I had an apartment <laughs> in downtown in the fucking hood on on uh, alvarado and six weren't you on a couch at first though i did i did do a couch tour my my buddy jay let me stay on his couch until i kind of got the, the, a check and that that paid my rent the good thing about working at island was that everyone there smoked weed mm. and i had connections to weed so i basically my my supplemental income was selling weed to everybody who worked at island in los angeles Wait, that people smoked at island yeah, <laughs> this is Bob Marley's label, <laughs> uh, Rastafari. Um, yeah, everyone there was a mean stoner, and uh, and then yeah, I got this hookup with this kid who was trying to get signed to Island. He basically was like selling me weed for like nothing, so it was like <laughs> it was a very high profit margin for me. There you go. <coughs> um, so when did you guys phase? When did you phase out of music into breweries? Um, are you still? Are you tag teaming it? Are you doing both? Yeah, I still still keep my toes in the music pool. Yeah, okay. I still dabble a little bit. Still, yeah, OPM is still out there. We hopefully we'll we'll get to play at Beach Life next year. We'll see. Um, but um, no, it's like it's you know I'm I'm an artist to the core, and um, I try to apply that to this business of being in beer and. Um, but it's still it's still really in me to want to do music and to do art. I'm, I do all kinds of different art. So, who inspires you? What are your influences? Man, uh, in, in regards to which part the music? Music? Yeah. Um, Bob Marley is one of my one of my greatest inspirations. Um, uh, I was fortunate to work at Island at his label and got to learn about his whole his whole life and got to study his entire catalog and. My favorite thing about him was that at that time, this would have been, you know, late 60s, early 70s, where Americans' perception of a Jamaican was that they were like these criminals that were like selling ganja over into Miami or whatever, and that they were these evil, murderous people or whatever. And then this guy uh, comes to America with his songs, and he's the most benevolent human who's ever, you know, touched, touched the planet um, and just you can just hear it in his songs that he just loves every single person. Um, and that, that, uh, inspired me a lot. Um, yeah. And just a great songwriter. But anyways, um, well, it's been a pleasure to have you, sir. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me guys. You, s you send me into tangents and I'll go on tangents. So cheers it's running into it. Cheers. A guys. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Thank great you guys. so much. Tell also, our compo that we love them. Credit to these guys here. I, I didn't. I'll catch your names after. But this is Josh. Josh. That's my wife Marie over there, and that's Hi. Jr. He's the general manager at Trancho Hill Brewing Co. So if you're coming you to Thousand Oaks, all day. Yeah. He's a crush. If you want to come up to Thousand guys. Oaks and visit the brewery, I'd love to. Reach out to Jr. He'll take good care of you. Okay. Um. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Beautiful. It's been fun. All right. 
right, guys. <laughs>